大家好,欢迎 uh, Hey everybody, my name is Brian Wang from Monarch Defense I uh, really am so excited to have you guys here for the This is going to be summer 2021 for AAPI gun owners And uh, we're going to have our community outreach day and live fire range day So I'm super happy, super excited you guys are here We got the range all pretty up for you guys Let's talk about a couple things because And this is going to take a little bit of time So just set aside a few minutes, watch through these videos Let's understand kind of what to expect safety protocols that I want to expect out of you and things that you can do to help prepare to have a great time out here in the range. Okay, so first things first. What is the point of the point of the event? Right? We're trying to bring people in from all over the community, uh, new gun owners, used gun owners, uh, people who are interested in home defense, self-defense, concealed carry, people interested in just exploring, people maybe interested in purchasing a firearm, people who've just recently bought a firearm. These are the types of people we want to, to welcome. And we want you to get a chance to spend some time uh, at the private facility so that we can do a little bit of shooting. We can, we can, you can rotate through a couple of instructional blocks and you can meet some of the different uh, trainers and see some of the products see some of the different firearms and the non-lethal types of equipment that you can use uh, to help protect yourselves and your family and most importantly you can build community you can meet people you can make friends you can come and get to know us because we are a local resource to the Bay Area and so there's just a lot of good things to happen but uh, you need to kind of be prepped mentally you know what to expect so that way you guys have a good time all right so let's get into it of course safety is the most important step um, and we're always going to be talking about safety throughout the day. So let's just get into it early on so that way you understand what I expect from you and what the staff and what the event hosts um, and AAPI go, what they expect out of you. So I want you guys to understand it's going to be 100 degrees out. It's going to be summer, blue sky, some wind, and it's going to be very dry. So you need to be drinking water. You should each be bringing a gallon jug of water and we'll have filling stations for you. So we do have plenty of drinking water, but really you should be drinking water aggressively and then seeking shade aggressively. Same thing goes if you have dogs, you're welcome to bring dogs, but you need to make sure they got water, make sure they're staying in the shade, and make sure you're taking care of them. You know, if you want to bring your children, they're totally welcome. This is a family friendly event. So men, women, young, old, <coughs> cats, dogs, iguanas, they're all welcome. But again, stay in the shade. Um, watch for you know overheating, signs of overheating is if someone stops sweating, they turn flushed red, and they're not making sense, they're making mistakes, they seem to be exhausted, they're just sitting down trying to cool off, or they're in the car with the air conditioning on trying to cool off. If that's the type of person, come find one of us, we'll get him in the shower, we'll douse him down with cold water, and he'll be just fine in five minutes. But, you know, we got to catch those things early. So heat is the number one problem that you guys will experience. Now, the second thing is, obviously, gun handling. So let's talk about gun handling. When we are handling firearms... I want you to be aware of three things. The first thing is where you're pointing the gun. When you're moving around the property uh, and you have a long gun, I expect you to have a chamber safety flag inserted. I expect you to have the action like this, closed up on the chamber safety flag. Now we're talking long guns right now. And I expect that if you're gonna move around with it, it's either in its bag or its container, or you have it on a sling, muzzle up, or muzzle down. Now, of course, there's different types of guns, there's different types of slings, but when we're talking about long guns, this is what I expect from you. If you want to set it down, you can, of course, set it down on the tables on the range. We have certain racks and places for putting on long guns. You can set it down there, um, but I want you to be cognizant about how you're handling these firearms. They need to be unloaded, so we're going to be running a cold range event. More on this later. The, range, the, the guns are going to be unloaded, and then you need to be handling them in a safe manner, thinking about where you point it up or down uh, with the chamber safety flag installed. And of course, as a last step, I want the safety to be on the safe position, okay? So that's for long guns. If you have questions, uh, give me an email, uh, info at monarchdefense.org. I'd be happy to answer that. Now, if we talk about handguns, handguns need to be in a holster. So here we have a handgun. Of course, the handgun is clear. You're going to Close the handgun after unloading it. You're going to operate the proper safety features such as decocking this Beretta. And then you're going to insert this into the holster and it's going to stay inside the holster the entire day unless you're doing something with it, right? So you get tired, you get hot, you get sweaty. You're going to peel this thing off and set it down? No, it stays in the holster. It stays attached to you. If you want to go take a pee, that's fine. It stays attached to you. You want to go eat some food and drink some water, that's fine. It stays attached to you. The entire day, it needs to be connected to your body. So we don't want to set this down and walk away from it. Now, the other thing is, you do not pull out your handgun to play with it, to check something, 
uh, or to show and tell. All right, so this is really, really important. Are you guys in the back catching this? Make sure that your firearm is in the holster the entire time, unless we're specifically training with it or we're doing something on the range using that handgun. That's the only time it comes out of the holster. All right, so that's a very important expectation that I have for you guys. And we could talk about holsters and, and the other accoutrements that you need in a little bit, all right? So, long guns, to summarize. Muzzles up or down, chamber safety flag, and uh, either on a sling or, you know, set down somewhere where it belongs. Um, or you can leave it in the bag or box. Handguns, actions closed in the holster, weapon on safe or decock, and then you keep it in the holster. Or if you don't want to carry the gun around, that's fine, but you can just put it back inside your back or bag or your box. And if you want to just take your gun off and put it away in your bag, that's fine. We can do that. You know, just grab one of the, one of the, the staff and then just step up to the table. You can clear your stuff, put it away or whatever. What I don't want to see is folks over here in the parking lot handling guns, folks over there in the classroom doing show and tell, folks over there on the range, they're talking and looking at each other's gear, folks are facing the wrong direction looking at each other's gear. That's what I don't want, okay? So either we're organized and we're doing stuff with a firearm, we're handling it on the range, or it's put away where it needs to be, or you're carrying it slung across your shoulder, and it's not an issue, okay? You know, if it becomes an issue, we got to talk about this two or three times throughout the day, then maybe we'll have to change a policy, but I have a feeling you guys can listen to instructions. I think most of you guys are pretty sharp, so I expect you guys to be able to be safe handling your firearms. Okay, let's talk about... Um, procedures for parking. We'll have someone in the parking lot to greet you guys as you come in. We'll direct you to a parking space because parking in flat area is very limited out here in the mountains. Next thing is you're going to do a minimal amount of gun handling in the car, get your stuff, whatever you want to walk with, and then you're going to go immediately to our administration table where you will check in. We've got to figure out who you are, and I want to see that you have had this particular briefing right here. Now, when they ask you what information do you have, you're going to tell them you have information Zulu, all right? So this is borrowed from uh, pilot or flight training where every time you approach an airport, you need to tell them what information you have so that they, they know that you have the most up-to-date briefing, briefings on weather. But for you, you need to have information Zulu when you show up to that table or else, guess what? Be prepared to sit through this briefing one more time. So do your best to listen. Pay attention to this briefing that I'm giving you right now. So when you get here, you'll fit right in. You'll know exactly what to expect. You'll know where to go. It'll be all smooth. All right. So you show up to the table. You tell them you've got information Zulu. You understand what I expect from you. They're going to inspect your firearms. If you don't have a chamber safety flag, we'll provide you one. All right. That's really important. Uh, let's look at that on a rifle. Here we have a rifle. Chamber safety flag goes into the chamber, and then we just ease the action closed. That's exactly how you're going to carry this thing. We check the safety is on the safe position. Okay, weapons on safe, magazines removed, and now you can sling this and go about your business throughout the day. And if you want to set it down, when we, whenever we have a classroom or range space, you can find a table or you know a rack. You can set it down if you don't want to help, if you don't want to hold on to it. Um, just so you know, if we have um, a rifle such as one of these on a, on a big sling. You can carry this behind you. That's totally fine. If you guys can see that in the camera, it's just hanging behind me. Uh, if you want to have it in front, that's also fine. You can just set it across your chest like that. That's totally fine. What I don't want to see you doing is touching it, handling it, playing with it, messing with it, showing, doing show and tell, looking through your scope. I don't want to see any of that stuff, okay? So just, it's not an, it's not an issue. Just keep do whatever you're doing and just have your gun with you, okay? So. Uh, that's if you don't want to set it down. Now, I want to talk about this. This is really important. When you set down your firearm and you walk away from it, remember, you're responsible for that firearm. So I want to make sure that you are checking that you leave with the same equipment that you came with. Just this last weekend, uh, July 4th, we had a gun safety class. Two students walked off with pieces of my equipment. They were very nice. They emailed me afterwards. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll bring it back to you. They come drop it off at my house. You know, but... Um, I want to be certain that no student or no attendee walks off with your equipment. So every time, as soon as you show up, the first thing you're going to do is put your name on it. See this piece of equipment right here? It's got somebody's name on it. See this magazine? It's got someone's initials on it. Same thing. When you show up, the first thing that you're going to do is grab a slip of blue tape and you're going to put it on yourself so that you have a name. The second thing is you're going to take every piece of equipment that you could possibly set down and put your name on it. So that includes guns, magazines, holsters, range bags, uh, water bottles. Dude, we, you don't know how many water bottles I end up here with because people leave them for me. So if you leave it here, it's a donation to the range, okay? Especially if, you know, it's HK USP compact, something like that. Yeah, go ahead, leave that here, give it a donation to the range. All right, any questions on what I expect for you for your safety? Cool. Let's move on. A couple other things I want to talk about. 
Let's talk about dogs, children, and let's talk about rattlesnakes. Out here in the arid uh, environment, in the desert environment, there are rattlesnakes. You will find them all across the Western United States. You find them all across the United States anyways. We have seen a little itty bitty bitty rattlesnake. It's like the size of a pencil. It's really tiny. I'm no expert on snakes, but I don't want to go mess with that thing. And you're talking to a guy who likes to go pick up and play with snakes. But that particular one, I don't want to mess with it. So if you're here, just be aware there are going to be rattlesnakes. So when you set down a piece of equipment and you want to go pick up this equipment, or if you're going to help me move something, you know, a, a, bird, a burn barrel or a trash can or, you know, a pile of wood or something like that, just look at it twice. Make sure there's no snakes underneath it before you pick it up. Okay? So that's the other thing. When you're here, keep an eye on your children so that they aren't going and getting their fingers and stuff and playing with things that can have, you know, potentially rattlesnakes hiding in them. I'm not saying it's a big issue. It really is not because my whole life I've been out in the backcountry spending a lot of time in the woods and in the desert and the snakes are not a problem. Just leave them alone and they will leave you alone, okay? So dogs, we will have water for them. We'll have shade for them. They are welcome. But when we start shooting, they need to go farther away from the line, okay? So you'll have places where you can put them in the shade. But again, like I love dogs, but it's not my job to babysit your dog. So you have to have a plan for where you're going to keep your dog and it cannot be inside your car. Are we clear about that? So dogs and kids do not go inside the car. As long as we're 100% clear, this sounds silly for me to tell you. It's going to be 100 degrees out. You may not put your dog in the car, okay? We got shade, we got water, there'll be other people who are dog lovers, there'll be other dogs. Make a friend, have your dog make a friend, and just ask them, like, hey, for the next 10 minutes, can you watch my dog while I do this thing? No problem, I'm sure we can figure that out, okay? So, your kids, you gotta be with them. Uh, they're welcome to handle firearms, they're, ha they're welcome to shoot. Your job is to figure out if they're old enough and mature enough and big enough, and then your job is to be there and supervise them. So you may not let your kids run off and go do other stuff. Um, without adult supervision, particularly handling firearms, anytime you're handling firearms, you got to be here. And certainly with your dogs, if you want to let them play and the dogs are getting along, I have no problem with that. It's fine. But if a dog is getting out of hand, you better be there to put an end to that right away. All right. So understand that the dogs, the children, your firearms, your gear, your health, these are your responsibility. I just want to be totally clear about that. All right, so the things that we will provide, we will provide folks trained in uh, emergency first aid. We will provide you water. We will provide you food. We will provide you parking and shade. Speaking of parking, uh, two-wheel drive accessible road. You can definitely get here. Don't worry. Um, but if you can, please try to carpool because parking is very limited. All right, questions. So we talked about dogs, children. We talked about snakes. All right, so if you can carpool, please try to carpool. Um, the other thing is, if you can try to limit your trash because we have a very hard time getting rid of trash here. Um, so uh, I would really ask you guys to not bring any disposable once use water bottles. If you wanna use a water bottle, it's kind of a throwaway water bottle, but you wanna reuse it throughout the day, that's completely fine with me, but I don't wanna see a gajillion water bottles uh, stacked up in our trash cans and overflowing out of the trash cans that then later on we have to go and take it and find a dumpster and, and get rid of it that way. So I really would prefer you guys to minimize your trash, minimize your litter, minimize your waste plastic and disposable plastics. Okay, any questions? So those are just a couple tips for being out here in the, in, in the back country at our facility. So if you have questions, email me, Brian Wang at Monarch, uh, sorry, info, info at monarchdefense.org. And my name is Brian Wang.